Zombies Chronicles has got to be the best DLC for Call of Duty since Resurrection, giving us eight classic maps fully remastered for the next generation of consoles. But even though they are very faithful to the originals, there are still various changes that were made to each map, so I wanted to go through and show off all the ones that I've noticed. But first I want to go over some of the things that apply to multiple maps. Every map now has gobblegum machines, Double Tap has been replaced with Double Tap 2.0, and PhD Flopper has been replaced with Widow's Wine, the Spare Change Easter Egg works on every perk machine, new Wonder Fizz machines were added to all of the maps except Shangri-La, Moon, and Origins, granting access to perks that were not originally present, background music on some maps like Noct, Verrucht, and Kino der Toten were removed, you can run through debris immediately upon opening it, whereas before you would have to wait for it to clear out, on Ascension, Shangri-La, and Moon, characters will no longer react to the Easter Egg songs. Death Machines and Fire Sails were added to all the maps that didn't already have them, although it is impossible to get a Fire Sail naturally unknocked. These maps have updated weapons, which includes access to weapon kits and the alternate ammo types, but I mainly bring this up because the new wall weapons often differ from what was originally there, both in price and type of weapon, and any weapon-specific quotes for guns that are no longer in the game have been cut. Hey look! A new toy! For the first time, grenade impacts do damage on the World at War maps. The round progression music has been changed for each map except Nocturne and Toten and Origins. The mystery box now has a blue light on the World at War maps, where originally it was either absent or a different color. Any special zombie behaviors like marching or trying to dodge bullets have been removed. Semtex grenades are absent from any maps that originally had them. And finally, each map has received various little easter eggs, both visual and audio, the most notable of which being the Monty radios and the Samantha dolls. But those are the changes I've noticed that apply to multiple maps, now let's get into the specifics of each one. I'm going to start with Verrucht because it has the least amount of changes. But first, just to clarify, I am comparing this map, as well as Nocturne and Toten and Chino Numa, to their Black Ops 1 versions, since those are the ones that they seem to be primarily based on. Anyway, there are only two things of note here. The Running Shower now has blood in the water, which puts a red tint on your screen when you stand under it, and the Winter's Howl has been replaced with the Wonder Wolf. I wonder if this is because they felt like the Wonder Wolf was a better gun for the map, or if they just didn't feel like remaking the Winter's Howl. For Noctodare on Toten, the Mule Kick machine was placed on a different wall. If I had to guess, this is probably to force players to face the corner when they buy it, making it riskier to do mid-round. The price of the weapon cabinet has been increased from 1500 points to 5000. It is also treated more like a special wall buy than a mystery purchase, with the Locust being referenced by name and even getting its own chalk outline. And the character quotes, which were included in Black Ops, were removed for Black Ops 3, which is more in line with the World at War version. Also like the World at War version, the intro cinematic returns, but the word Nazi has been replaced with Call of Duty. Next up, Kino Der Toten. In the spawn room, the zombies will now approach through this doorway, which they never did in Black Ops. This map has received two new wall weapons, the Vesper in the stairway by Mule Kick, and the M8A7 in this room overlooking the alley. Nova 6 zombies cannot be made into crawlers, and when you return to the mainframe, sometimes the horde of zombies will run in from the theater like they did in the original map, but other times they will all just respawn in the room, possibly before you even get back. This does seem to happen more often when you get sent to one of the rooms, so it probably has something to do with being far enough away from the zombies to despawn them. In Shangri-La, there is a lot more resistance when you run through the shrunken zombies. When a drop is present on the map, the cheering monkeys can only be heard from the temple, whereas before they could be heard throughout the whole map. The two bosses, the Napalm and Shrieker zombies, both die when you get too far away from them, though this affects the Napalm zombie much more often because of how slow they are, which is a real pain during the easter egg. Also, remember earlier when I mentioned that a lot of wall weapons were altered? Well, as part of that, there are no shotgun wall buys available on the Black Ops 3 version of Shangri-La, making it the only map in Zombies history to not have one. Well, at least for traditional round-based maps. We'll take a look at Origins next. The eyes on the Templar zombies now glow yellow like the rest of the zombies, although their actual physical eyes are still blue. And since the intro cinematic is the same from Black Ops 2, they still have the blue glow there. The ones from the crazy place, however, are unchanged. The Panzer Soldat is a lot harder to take down than before. I mean, I couldn't find any stats to prove this, but he definitely feels tougher. 
Those weird details from the Black Ops 2 HUD, like the floating perks or the persistent gramophone in the corner, have been fixed with the new Black Ops 3 HUD. And to account for the gobble gums, some of the controls had to be changed. The shield is now equipped by pressing down on the D-pad, and the Maxis drone is now right on the D-pad. However, the Maxis drone and the trip mines have the same input, which means that you can no longer have both at the same time. For Ascension, three new wall buys were added, the CUDA behind the second RK5 spot, the ICR next to Lander F, and the KN44 in the area outside Pack-a-Punch. The easter egg song Not Ready to Die from Call of the Dead can be activated by knifing the three red phones while they ring. No more monkeys jumping in the spawn room, they will only use the stairs to reach the lower level and will not jump down like before. When your perks are being stolen, they will no longer beep. Richthofen is in his standard outfit instead of his alternative one, and unlike the Wonderfizz machines on any other map, Ascensions only gives two perks, Deadshot and Double Tap. This was probably done so that the machine could not be used to bypass the monkey rounds, but there is actually a cool way that you can still do this, you just gotta go get your wallet and enter your credit card. In Shino Numa, we can see that the meteor is now blue instead of red, like how it is in the Origins intro. The puddles in this path leading to the storage hut are absent, allowing you to run through at full speed. The map is significantly less foggy than before. Quick Revive has been moved to the first room, and Mule Kick will now be in one of the four huts. But what's interesting is that Quick Revive will still be shown when it cycles through the perks, and Mule Kick will not. Furthermore, it will always cycle through all four perks, even the ones you've unlocked in other locations, unlike in previous versions where it would only show the perks you hadn't found yet. This wall weapon in the main building was removed, but there are five new ones that were added. The Vesper outside the doctor's quarters, the Argus near the fishing hut, the Cuda by the storage hut, and the VMP and another Argus outside the comm room. We are on to the last map, Moon, which actually has a lot more changes than any of the others. The Bowie knife is now completely inaccessible without depressurizing the labs, grenades are unaffected by low gravity, at the start of a match, Hellhounds can now spawn before the first alarm. The Astronaut will only spawn in the receiving bay, something that would get a lore explanation in Black Ops 4. The button to equip the Astronaut helmet or the Hacker has been changed to down on the D-pad in order to accommodate the gobble gums. Like Ascension, Richthofen does not use his alternate outfit. The blue eyes on the zombies are very intense, similar to how they would be with Vulture Aid. They even poke through the Astronaut's visor. The comms in the spacesuit, which let you hear other characters talking from anywhere in the map, were removed. The music when the pyramid is being opened has been changed. And finally, the easter egg is now entirely doable in solo, but this also makes Richthofen the only playable character. <laughs> yeah! Kaboom! And those are all of the differences that I have found in Zombies Chronicles. I'm sure there are still some that I've overlooked, but these are the big ones. Some of them may not have been intentional, and others likely due to constraints that they faced, but for the most part, Treyarch deliberately made these changes with the intention of improving the game, and I personally find it fascinating to see what they wanted to improve about their older work. 